Hello and welcome to Geek Domo's Ramp Up. Today is our very first episode. We are going to be talking a little bit about EverQuest Next. All the footage you see recorded here is from this last Friday. So this is brand new footage of EverQuest. Now I want to go back in time a little ways to when I was just out of the Navy in 1998. I was playing a game called Ultima Online and about the end of the time I was playing that game I got a little bit bored I started seeing stuff for EverQuest coming out and at the time video cards 3D video cards were pretty rare I think I had a Canopus 3D FX video card in those days anyway uh, I saw some applications for the beta I signed up and I was one of the very first waves of people to get into the EverQuest beta it was a pretty cool and exciting game for its time. Nowadays you look at it and you realize just how bad it was, but in those days it was really epic and cool to be able to play a three-dimensional video game where you could run around and actually interact with the environment. Move ahead, uh, World of Warcraft ended up taking a lot of the things that EverQuest did and made it better, and that's one of the reasons World of Warcraft was so successful. There were other MMOs in between World of Warcraft and EverQuest, but basically World of Warcraft took what the best of the stuff was from all of the recent MMOs at that time and made it into their own. Now EverQuest Next is from Sony Online Entertainment. It is, I believe, the fourth or fifth iteration of the EverQuest game. There was EverQuest, a bunch of expansions, then there was EverQuest 2, and then they had some kind of EverQuest Online, which was only for consoles, and it became a kind of muddled up mess at the time. So what's happening now with EverQuest Next is it's going to be a brand new IP. What they're going to be doing is using the original names of places, but the lore is a complete reboot, just like J.J. Abrams did in the Star Trek franchise. Now, some of the cool features of this game is it uses the Planet Side 2 engine, but it is a 100% voxel-based game. Now, if you're not familiar with voxels, voxels are tiny little squares. Now, if you play Minecraft, the voxels are very large. If you play uh, Cube World, the voxels are a little bit smaller. But in EverQuest Next, the voxels are going to be almost microscopically small. Now, it takes a lot of video horsepower to render this, and I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to do that. But ultimately, what it means is the game is built through complete three dimensions, not just a surface. So, like when you're watching a character run around and we'll have some on the screen right now of EverQuest Next when normally you see a character running around it's running on a surface plane that's a texture laying on top of a flat piece of ground in a voxel based game it's actually three dimensional you could technically take an axe and chip away at the ground and you could dig a hole that's why Minecraft works right if you play Minecraft you know that you can dig down inside of a, of a three dimensional sphere until you get far enough to where you can't go any farther down so this one is using the Planet Side 2 engine, but it is also a voxel based game, which I don't believe Planet Side 2 is, so I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to merge the engines together. Some of the features of EverQuest Next that are specifically new are they're totally redoing the characters. The characters are now very Disney-like, and why would they do that? Well, not that they're trying to rip off Disney, but when you stand far away from a Disney character, or even if you're watching a movie and you're in the last row, you can easily see the characters emotes on the screen that's why Disney does that the eyes are really big and the eyelids go up and down and uh, the mouth is a big smiley grin and the nose is a little bit larger a little bit more caricature of the real face and that's because it makes it easy to see emotes EverQuest Next is going to have an emote system where you can use your webcam and it will record what your emote is at the time so you can say emote webcam or I forget what the emote control is but you'll you'll say that in the game and what will happen is your webcam will pick up how your face looks and it will re-render the character with your exact expression or at least close to it with that caricature over it pretty cool stuff the other things that you're going to have are parkour type movement meaning that uh, if you're familiar with parkour it's where you're running and jumping through an urban environment and I'll show you some video of that actually probably by now you've seen a bunch of that in the background but we'll go ahead and show you some more of that and uh, the characters will be able to interact with the environment as they're moving. Now the only game I've seen recently that did that was a game called Guild Wars 2, which some of you might know about. Guild Wars, if you're standing on a hill, your character's one leg was higher than the other one. And if it was running up a hill, it actually was leaning forward like it would be in real life. So they're going to be doing that. Now some of the things they actually did steal from other games, which is totally fine. I think in the massively multiplayer online role-playing game, MMORPG, the thing of the day is actually to steal. <laughs> because 
trying to innovate and then you make a brand new game doesn't often work out the best for you. Now, EVE Online is a very great game. There's a lot of people who play it and a lot of people who love it to death, but it basically went off of the complete norm and you were flying a spaceship with an Excel spreadsheet, which is interesting, but it doesn't make it feel realistic, at least to me. So totally innovating brand new stuff, not always the best. Totally stealing like Rift stole 100% from World of Warcraft down to the menu like when in Rift if you were to go down a sub menu you were going down the exact same sub menu you would in World of Warcraft with the same exact titles so it was like almost just a reskin of WoW with some neat things with the Rifts and all that yes but for the most part they really stole so what they're going to be stealing with this one is multi-classing multi-classing comes from Rift uh, basically you start out with eight classes and you're allowed to take any of those eight classes and build on on them with other classes that you find while you're moving around and questing and things like that pretty common in more modern games but in the older games they never did something like this so there are up to 40 new classes that you can find while you're out running around there in books or quests you do and you'll unlock a new class you can then piecemeal what you like of that class and put it into your main class or just totally not even use your main class and just use the new classes you find so that is one thing. Now they also stole something from Guild Wars 2, which is the weapon system. Your skills are tied to the weapon you're carrying. If you're carrying a halberd, you're going to do one type of attack. If you're carrying a sword, you'll be able to do a different type of attack. Mix that with the different types of classes. It's almost an infinite character system, which is pretty darn cool. Another innovation that's actually from Guild Wars 2 two is the destructibility now other games have had some sort of level of destructibility but guild wars was the first one where if you're doing pvp out in the wvw area and you knock down a castle wall the wall fell down and you could actually run in through the hole that you made with your trebuchet or whatever and this game is going to go to a whole new level because it's voxel based you'll be able to destroy walls you'll be able to dig holes you'll be able to blow up a monster and there's going to be a crater right where he was which is pretty darn cool i will show you some video clips of that right now everything can be destroyed and that means everything can be created and we'll talk a little bit about the creative stuff in a minute the other new thing that they're going to be doing which is a little bit stolen from Warhammer Online is emergent AI now emergent AI with Warhammer Online was you basically had public quests that you could do and of all the people around you would help to finish up that quest and if you finished up the quest as a group you all got a percentage of what the loot would be or whatever it was and that was one way that they did it so that you everybody who can participated got some sort of cut now the new one here is they're basically going to make a character we'll use an orc as an example the orc loves sheep likes to eat sheep he likes to hit characters over the top of the head and steal their loot and he really really likes mountainy areas they're going to literally generate orcs and drop them in the world in random locations and the orcs will migrate to those type of things. If there's an area where there's sheep, it will try to migrate to that area. If enough of them migrate to that area, they will set up a camp and they will try to go out and raid the sheep and stuff. If they migrate to an area that has nothing but rocks, they will go there and they will build up their tents and stuff in that particular area. So basically the way this AI works is the artificial intelligence is completely reactive to the environment and they're building it that way on top of that they have public quests so you are as an entire server will be building a brand new town say and when you're building this new town you're going to be doing some sub quests that might unlock the next phase but you're not sure and each time they generate this particular public quest the triggers are 100% randomized, meaning that on one server it took this to get it to do it, on another server it took this other thing to get it to do it, and therefore nobody will be able to even know what exactly triggers it on every single server, which is going to be quite interesting. The uh, next thing that is really cool about this is this is all of the worlds are going to be procedurally generated. So uh, if you watch some of my other videos on Cube World, you'll see that we are covering procedurally generated worlds such as Cube World, Minecraft, which are generated on the fly. When you run long enough in any one direction, it never ends. And that's the way that this world is going to be. They're going to have areas that are sort of pre-built and, of course, you know, like Quenos and, and the Common Lands, wherever it is that you're running around through, uh, will be set up already and they'll be there. But if you run long enough, you'll hit the ocean. And if you swam long enough, you might hit another continent. And if you run on that continent, you'll just keep going and going and going. So the procedure generated worlds are nice. But the cool part about this whole thing is the procedure generated worlds are in three dimensions, meaning that you can go down as far as you want to until you hit lava. So that's pretty darn cool. Which brings us to another point. 
uh, there's going to be what's called permanent change. So if you have a main town that the walls get knocked down, they might regenerate because otherwise it kind of screws up how you walk in and out of the town. But if you're out in an area that is more like wild jungle and you knock down trees, the trees might stay down forever. Or you might be able to plant a tree and that tree will grow and that'll stay there forever. The servers are supposed to be dynamic and they constantly change with whatever is implemented on them. All right, so on top of all of that, there is one thing that's going to be released this year, and that's why we're covering this all right now. EverQuest Next might be coming out in the next six months. Probably not. It's probably coming out closer to a year to two years down the road. But one thing that is coming out this fall, or this winter, I'm sorry, is EQ Next Landmark. Now, so what? It's like a sub-game? No, it's actually going to be EverQuest Next, but there won't be any mobs. There won't be any uh, quests to do or anything like that. Why bother? because they're going to use the procedurally generated world and you will be able to go there take your pick dig holes mine minerals build your own castle and then take that castle and sell it you can sell your stuff for real money if you decide that your castle is just absolutely amazing you can put it up on the uh, everquest next store and people can buy your castle for five bucks or whatever you will get uh, $4.99 or whatever, uh, EverQuest will take a cut of it, of course, but you'll get a, a portion of that money back for you to have forever. Now, say you design something like a wagon, and the wagon is just like a little thing that people can put around, and you're going to charge $0.10 cents for the wagon or $0.20. Cents. Now, say somebody then takes and builds an entire city, and they include your wagon like three places. You will get paid a portion of the cost to purchase that city. You'll get a cut of it, and if that person who built that city it took elements from 25 different people all 25 people are going to get a cut of the cost of to buy that entire city everquest landmark basically you'll be able to build your own house and put it into everquest later on which is pretty cool but ultimately the real cool part about this is this uh say the developers go you know what we need a cathedral and you're an amazing builder you can build some awesome stuff in everquest next you can then build your cathedral and they will put it up on a website where everyone will get to vote whether or not they like that cathedral versus everybody else who built a cathedral. Once that is done, the voting is done, and the EverQuest, you win that competition, that cathedral will be placed somewhere in the game permanently forever after launch. That is really epic. So you really can ultimately change the way this game is played, even the way it looks. All right, so that's enough about this right now. As more information comes out, I will be updating. That is the entire purpose of this show. We are covering EverQuest next right now. We will cover other games as we get going. When that happens, I will update people with whatever changes are coming. Even if it's as low as a screenshot, say, hey, everybody, this is a new screenshot. Check it out for EverQuest Next or whatever game we're covering at the time and even five months from now I will still come back to EverQuest Next and tell you about what changes are coming as we get them in. Alright, thanks a lot for watching everybody. This has been Geek Domo. Until next time, see ya! Oh my god, there's some skeletons coming at us. Are you serious? Skeletons. Nice. Not, not, not zombies.